Uh, and like I said, by the end, we're going to we're definitely go deeper into mainnets. So I'm going to pass it over to Flower for a news rundown. And we'll go from there. Grand rising citizens. E exciting time in the crypto world, huh? Like th the markets have finally started to tank a bit. Yay. <laughs> it's not just up only for, for days. <laughs> As I have predicted, the ETF was not an immediately bullish event. So, you know, the the approval of the ETF seems that it was indeed priced in a bit. And what we're seeing now is BTC trying to break below that psychological 40K barrier for the first time in a while now. So, yeah, to, to those, uh, you know, of you who thought that ETF is just going to turbo send to new all-time highs, front-running the Bitcoin halving... I, I guess not. We'll just have to wait another half a year or something. Um, in fact, yeah, uh, some people I talk to are saying that if we now lose this, um, 33K is very likely. And so, you know, I hope you took some profits. We've been chatting with our doc Yeti about, you know, how you can have a plan. But if you don't execute on it, <laughs> whatever. Um, so yeah, it looks like now now it's going to be um, a, a funny period because I, I did think everyone was a bit over bullish. Um, obviously, none of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. You shouldn't be taking me seriously. I'm just a guy that's been you know patiently waiting on the sidelines, watching everyone around him make bank for. <laughs> the past half a year and I'm now ready to deploy when you know just I, I missed a lot of trains and I've seen things getting serious lately so you know time to scoop up some cheap coins when we get there looks like Shams is missing today from the panel so this is pretty much the only piece of price action analysis you're gonna get regarding mainstream crypto so unless you know anyone here has some better insights into into what's waiting in the well I guess crypto world we should just dive into the specific news I guess and there is a lot of exciting stuff to cover I'm also hearing and this is why we have I guess Phoenix down on the panel as you know he doesn't show up as much but when he does <laughs> it's poised to to get a bit spicy yeah like i'm hearing there's there's a, a spicy rubbish segment in progress can't wait to hear it obviously um it, i just skimmed the headlines of the thread it's also pinned and yeah you know it's another one of those Another piece of content regarding major brands or influencers or, you know, entities with literal millions of dollars behind them who already made it and they don't need any money, but they're still plundering the loot from their followers and using community as exit liquidity, sucking them dry. So, you know, oh yeah, baby, just another, another day in Web3, I guess. Okay, um, let's let's move on to some headline news first. I wanted to touch briefly on the gaming updates. Pixelmon is still building. Their floors are pumping. They're about to reach 2 ETH now. And everyone is starting to take them seriously. Like, I remember a year or two ago, some people wrote them off, you know, or were like just, yeah... They, they, I guess, raised a lot of money, but, you know, if the leadership sucks, we can do anything with it, and it looks like they're going to fix it, and, you know, some of the game previews that we've been seeing lately are really fire, so... And they also have supposedly more games uh, developing inside their ecosystem as well. Then we have Yuga announcing that they will be relaunching Dookie Dash, I think just last week we spoke about them with Hustlepedia, and it's a shame, you know, he said it's a shame that the game 
the trajectory descent isn't on the website anymore, like isn't playable. Well, I guess they listened <laughs> to his advice because, you know, putting it back in is like a good strategic move. Then we have Shrapnel running a 3 million prize pool event or tournament or something. That's, you know, one of the biggest in the gaming Web3 space up until the date so, so far. I think it's like really a lot of players are excited for that. Then we have another game, Pixels, different name than Pixelmon again. Um, they're... A farm game and they just concluded their leaderboards they took a snapshot it was heavily botted thus they decided to purge some people from from the actual leaderboard and they said they will announce that 7k people out of 100k will qualify for their airdrop and their TGE is soon perhaps it, it will happen by end of month um, Speaking of snapshots and airdrops, Zeta Chain just today announced that they'll be releasing their own. And then we also have the Manta airdrop. Um, they completely botched it. Like, this is probably the first major Layer 2 chain where, you know, they have to actually turn comments off under their tweets. It was so bad, like, the community was let down. I know people who bridged over there, you know, the, the lowest amount you could bridge was 0.25 ETH, and they took a playbook out of, you know, Blast's book. They, they, you know, you locked ETH in their ecosystem and you were accumulating points and rewards, and you could merge those, I guess, boxes into NFTs, but you know what people got for their allocation didn't even cover the gas fees required to breach the ETH. So, you know, not, not everything in airdrops is free money if it's diluted and over-farmed and the team doesn't allocate enough, enough tokens to the community. That's what happens. And yeah, additionally, just a few days before they launched their token, they announced a partnership and launch on, on Binance, where people could stake BNB to get tokens. And of course, you know, they allocated almost the same amount to people on that centralized exchange than community who's been farming it for months. So people on Binance actually had like a decent shot at entry, and there were only two days to stake. So there was a lot of BNB locked in there. I think something like 15 million BNB tokens, which, you know, if you convert that to actual dollar amounts, it's like uh, quite significant. Right. Um, then in other news, we also have, and this is, I guess, wrapping up already. We have Steady Stack. Stack. They're they're seriously building, and like their ecosystem is quite action packed. And they announced like this new, I guess, not new, but like a, a really good polished roadmap for 2024. And they said that they will be devoting a lot of their time and efforts to bringing value to every single holder in 2024. So, you know, um, we've been covering them pretty regularly on the show, but, you know, you, you can still read more about them and, and keep track on it. And now I only have like two additional news or two questions for, for people on this panel, really. One is for Doc Yeti. Um, is AVEX copying Solana with their new phone? Or what's going over there? I just saw, you know, you posted uh, <laughs> how they're always chasing. And then... If Bright is around, what's going on with budgies? Like, there's still the talk of town, and their floor, in comparison to other NFT collections, is just completely sending. Um, they, they are about to flip Yuga if the momentum keeps up. And, like, I would like to know what they're building in that ecosystem. But I guess let's go to Photoshop first, since you have your hand up. Well, I, I saw you mention airdrops, and I know that you personally have kind of dedicated more time uh, and attention to airdrops and farming these airdrops. 
have you personally seen any success yet, success yet in that space? And, 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 or what are the ones that you're the most looking forward to, uh, that are, that are yet to drop? Um, you know me, right? <laughs> I constantly fail or I, I'm late to the party on many of the things I, I choose to get into. So, yeah, I, I think I'm like actually down just from gas fees and, you know, trying to to get on some stuff. So, no, like the direct answer to that would be no. Um, but I am like, it's it's a long term game, you know, it's like. Not for all the degens in crypto, because it, it's kind of like for delayed gratification. Sometimes you wait for, for a certain airdrops a year or two even. And the only things I like got was some, some minor stuff. But what I'm, like you asked, what I'm mostly involved in currently is farming tokenless layer two solutions, which, you know, scroll, Zora, ZK Sync. And obviously some bridging protocols that are now popping off and people are saying they're over farmed or whatnot, but you know, still looking for a decent chunk of allocation if they drop because some of the you know, some of the valuations of these projects are quite high. And for example, like Wormhole recently raised like I think two more than two hundred million. And similarly, Layer Zero, uh, they announced that they're they're looking to release their airdrop in the first half of this year, and their valuation is in the seven hundred million as well. So you know, some of these are not to be skipped over, if you ask me. Just you know, you want to do some transactions over there, and hope you you qualify that way. But would you go ahead? Yeah, I would definitely call out the uh, Jupiter Exchange. Um, airdrop that's coming. Round one of Jupiter airdrop is they've dubbed January as Jupuary. They have four rounds of airdrops coming. Um, the speculation is that they're going to do a one round every January. It's one of the leading DEXs for Solana. When you've seen all the volume kind of move from Ethereum, a lot of it was going over to Jupiter Swap. They have a bunch of different great products. Um, their DCA feature is super cool. They actually just added perps as well. Uh, so that's a big one. Look for that airdrop to be coming out. Uh, if you haven't qualified for it, you can definitely check. I mean, if you've used Jupiter, they did like a 200 Jupe um, welcome bonus. So even if you like just made any transactions over there, I think you might got that. So we we'll definitely double check on that one. Should bring a lot of liquidity into the space. Uh, good call out on Wormhole. They raised 225 million at a 2.5 billion valuation. They're definitely going to be having an airdrop. Would we'll be checking that one out. Um, Dimension, another good one. Uh, Dimension airdrop was also given to Pudgy holders and a few other popular NFT collections, the token was trading at $5 OTC. Um, and I think like the average person got at least like 100 uh, DYM tokens for Dimension. So that's another one you can check out. Um, it was EVM compatible for a few different protocols. So you might have qualified even though you don't know about it. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to add a few of those topics for airdrops. Yeah, speaking of airdrops on Solana, I think Tensor is always also worth looking into. They've been called the Blur on Solana. So, you know, imagine actually getting into Blur early before they even had their season one. That, that's another one I would look into if you're, if you're trying to get into that niche. Um, also, another thing on the topic of airdrops, Rabbi Wallet also announced that they took a snapshot this week. So, you, you know, you're probably late for that, but it's it's a really good wallet like rabbi is a wallet that's trying to compete with metamask and you know once you download it and just play around with it a bit you're not gonna go back to metamask now th this is not a paid shill like we're not sponsored by them but seriously like try it out it has so many features that you know what everything that's basically wrong with metamask they fixed you know they they have like alerts when you're interacting with weird contracts they also like display all the funds you have on all your chains you know you you don't have to switch chains to know which where you have gas and they also show you like you don't have to manually import tokens 
they do it for you you know it's it's just a more clean interface and they also like track if you locked any liquidity into any pools or if you have any token staked you know it it everything it shows up nicely and what's more you you don't have to even like add chains manually they they have a, a set of chains already important and you just cruise along as you inter interact with many dApps on your you know daily operations Doc, yeah, you you have a hand up yeah so i also i love rabbi you know the one thing that i saw that they announced a snapshot you talking about that photo picture that they put up or something else yeah they said they said smile for the camera and just put yeah. out this tweet and you know people thought it's in relation to the snapshot they'll be of, of course but you know i to me that to me is a marketing play that they haven't actually finished taking a snapshot that this is an intro to a campaign to onboard more people that's my guess so i don't think you're late and i think you should try rabbi the only comment i have on it uh, aside i mean i do really enjoy it um two things about it you have to be aware of number one is that it certainly doesn't have the history of metamask so although it's superior you are buying into it at a time when it hasn't had the same amount of uh, stress testing and security testing. And the other element is that there's still a few sites where I've had some difficulty getting it recognized, Wormhole being one of them, or the portal protocol. So um, I currently am still using utilizing both uh, as extensions and, and will swap between them occasionally, but uh, certainly we'll be looking at transitioning fully towards Rabi. Just for the token recognition and cross-chain token recognition alone, it's far superior. Yeah, a few thoughts on that. Um, well, the the airdrop could also be done in chunks, right? So, you know, they could be multiple snapshots. So you're right. Like, you, you should, you know, just dive into it for, for the functionality alone. But also for the airdrop, yeah, you're probably not too late. Um, and yeah, uh, it's early, right? So a lot of these websites will not pick it up. But you have an option to block MetaMask, but sometimes even that doesn't work and you still have to shift back and forth, like you mentioned. So I'm also currently using both of them, but whenever I can, I, I just, you know, default to, to Rabi. Um, since we have you up here, do, do you want to comment on the AVEX phone? Yeah, listen, I don't know much about it. I, th I first thought it was a joke. It's not AVAX. I mean, it's on AVAX. It's Trader Joe that seems to be putting it out. At first, I thought it was a meme, but it looks like they're doing it and calling it the Joan. So, listen, I don't know. I don't think this is alpha. This certainly isn't alpha. It's not beta. It's probably down in the delta or worse range of level of, uh, you know, things that you should pay attention to. But when I first saw it, it just seems like they were chasing this old phone and, and AVAX was a little bit behind on trying to pump their memes by announcing that community fund towards a uh, meme coin. So just seemed like chasing to me. Um, but, you know, something to keep an eye on if you need a new phone. Go check out the AVAX one if you missed the whole Soul Train. And uh, let me know how it goes. Yeah, I would actually, like, be surprised if companies don't take advantage of the hype that Solana created with their phone, right? It's just an obvious thing to do just create you know a similar similar phone to theirs and try and market it and jump on that hype train um i see brighty you came up we were discussing the the flippening earlier and it's not the flippening in eth in comparison to bitcoin it's the flippening of budgie penguins to yuga like what's going on there is, is the pump justified or are they getting into a territory where it's a bit overvalued at this point in your opinion i mean to me i think the timing is like a little bit surprising i don't really like know why why like all these like reprice things happen in these like huge pumps but i guess it's just like how NFTs work with FOMO and maybe there's like just like some some big people buying but I think Hey Brighty, we can barely hear you buddy. You're gonna have to adjust your mic or uh, I think it sound you're you're very, very quiet. Underwater. Yep, they're not doing anything different from usually. It's better now. Yeah it is. It is actually. Okay. I guess I just like need to move closer but I actually use the same setup as always. Uh, so I was mentioning, I think like, it's not so much about the valuation that like surprised me. I think like Penguins needed to like reprice higher for like a long time if you like compare what they did compared to other projects, especially like looking at like 
more like bull market valuations of these projects. Like we've seen like we've seen like so many projects in, in like the fifties range that like had like delivered far less, even though like market timing was obviously different. What really surprised me was like the speed of the pump. Like to me, like this pump should be like more gradual. And like not these like oh we just like don't do anything for like weeks and then we just like reprice by like two x yeah Brady like nothing can you hear me yes you're still very quiet so something's wrong with your mic let me just rejoin then I guess hey while he's rejoining I know you're talking about Pixelmon earlier and I'm sure they're building something great but it would be just a true web 3 fashion for them to re-rug us all it would be incredible and I tell you the day that that happens if that happens I'm going to buy whatever ugly NFT or whatever ugly product they provide because we know what's going to go what's going to happen there later on. Discount, right? but the issue over there is that basically the only thing that's you know intact from from last cycle is the treasury you know they completely revamp their own old product it's not even pixelated anymore you know it's, and what's more their entire team is just different you know it's it's not actually the same guys that raised all that money and that you know created all the hype now th these guys who are in charge now actually look like they're gonna you know, start delivering and start, you know, actually pushing out some products. I'm super disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I was praying for their demise because I wanted that Kevin to go to zero and then buy it and put it in my vault so badly. Joe. Well, I'm, I'm curious, was, as you talk about price action from Pudgies, I think Pudgies has done a few things really, really well as far as putting out their IP, what they've done with their gifts. What they've done, obviously, with their with their physical products and going into stores and mainstream. I wonder, I know that originally Yuga and their price was pumping quite a bit based off of uh, everything that they were giving to holders for free. And all of the, the token drops and the, the mutant apes and everything to reward holders. And I don't know that I've seen, now granted, that's not a sustainable uh, practice for an NFT but uh, I haven't seen the same movement from Pudgies, and I'm wondering where the value is for buying. Because, you know, to my knowledge, are they putting on big parties like ApeFest? Are they doing the things to reward holders and build that community? Or have, has it all, is it all based off of the IP that they've built? Because I, I'm curious about that price action, because I love to see them succeeding. I think it's a great project. I love the meme ability of their... Of their uh, art and everything but i'm i'm just curious how the price action compares right like with what uh, some other projects who've seen uh high floor price are are offering in comparison test how's my mic <laughs> Ooh, sounded good yeah i don't know like I, yeah, had sex. I always use my phone for space so now i swapped to my pc which i was like super skeptical about because that's like a new feature but yeah, uh, same same thing I was saying. I think like the what's like more surprising to me personally isn't the um the like valuation. I think like Pudgy is like needed to reprice since like forever because like if you look at like what they've done like throughout the bear market where like a lot of other projects just like went AFK basically. I think there's like a lot of like sense to to like the valuation. But like really surprises me is the way these these pumps happen and these like super like stepwise uh fashions like it's not like oh we'd slowly grind up it's like oh like penguins go sideways for like three weeks and there's like no news no anything and we suddenly just like 2x and it's not like there's any like specific like insider alpha there's like certain rumors but like all the like stuff that's like really like known like yes overpass is coming up but like that isn't like something that's like like new or like was like just like recently announced like everybody that like followed parties kind of knew that like overpass gonna happen like end of last year early this year so it's it's not really like any new info that came out so to me like the the like rapid pump is surprising i think the valuation isn't that surprising like considering 
like what we've seen like other projects add and like considering we're like kind of going back in a bull market it's like really niche like the only nfts that really are in a bull market outside of pudgies i'd say are like gaming nfts and i mean neo tokyo is also like kind of like returning to like more of like uh bull market valuations but let's say like that's also like kind of gaming niche although it's like more of a community but everything else is still like kind of bleeding but if we if we consider like going back into a bull market i think like the valuation is like super like surprisingly high or anything i think a lot of things that you guys mentioned are like on point the first thing is art is actually dope like they have a very cool ip that they can brand with but also like this is important right they actually stayed around like they they actively are participating in other web3 ecosystems like a lot of projects like you said went afk whereas they just you know grinded and reached out for partnerships and stayed down in the trenches uh, resulting in you know they're now building on zk sync and having partnerships with with a whole zk sync chain which surely you know over time will translate into every pudgy holder basically getting an airdrop from from that as well and then you also have you know they, they're just considered cool these days. Everyone wants to be a part of them or give them free stuff. Like we've seen with some other airdrops, they, ju- they just, you know, pudges are automatically they're in. You know, if you hold a pudgy, you get a chunk of the allocation. It's, it's just the meta um, in, in the last few weeks. And we've seen a lot of that. And, you know, this is what constitutes a, a successful project where, where everyone just wants to you know, associate with them, basically. All right. Um, yeah, I think we covered that pretty well. It's definitely uh, moving in that direction. Be uh, Bored Apes kind of heading on the downward, and uh, the Penguins are definitely on the upswing. There's a lot of that in this space for sure. Just like, you know, like you said, whatever seems cool, whatever people uh, are into, then uh, that gets the momentum. I'd like to hear from our man, Phoenix Down, who's up on stage today. As you mentioned, if when he's around, it's always a bit interesting. Uh, we've heard him griping a bit about this uh, one subject, which is uh, uh, Dul- Dulce Gabbana. Is that how you say it right? I don't even know this brand so well. But I think I did Dulce. get into it, uh, Dulce. Uh, I think I did uh, get into it with you uh, back in the day. You were you were all excited about it, and I think I uh, lost plenty of money on that one with you. But uh, you you want to you want to just give us a little recap, and uh, we'll let you vent. This is Phoenix down venting moment here. Oh boy, I've we've been, been waiting for this one. Let, let it run. Let it run. I've been waiting two years for this. So everybody, first of all, I need my man Luke Star up on stage. Please, can someone facilitate this? Luke's, me and Luke Star, we called this out ages ago. We saw what was happening. The crazy thing is, neither of us sold. So I mean, we're kind of we're kind of dumb. But I mean, he, yeah, please get Luke Star up. So uh, Dolce and Gabbana launched something like two years ago, an NFT project, and it's just been a complete disaster. And we've all been rugged at some point, right? And you go through different stages of emotions, like you're angry, you know, you're in disbelief, you're in denial. We're at the stage now where this is just the funniest thing in the world. Like we've been ripped off for like, you know, five figures, but it's just hilarious because of the incompetence. And there's never been like a more cast iron example of a soft rug than this one. But no one's heard about it. But today, as you can see in the pinned tweet up the top, some guy with a quarter of a million followers. I think he's a platinum box holder and they had to pay 40 ETH for those things. And he says that all he's got for his hundred thousand dollars is one, one t-shirt, one hoodie and one pair of shoes. <laughs> this is the shit that we've had to deal with for the last two years. And finally, only someone has said something about it today. <laughs> I can't believe it's taken this long. So, um, Luke, so are you coming up? Like, help me out, because I'm. I told you, I don't think I can get through this without hysterically laughing. Having having trouble um, adding him here. I don't know. Maybe he needs to drop off. To try again. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. All right. I'll try and keep this going. 
if you have any questions, please come in and save me. Cause yeah, I'm, but I do, I do actually. Like, what's the timeline on this? Like, how how did it happen? Like, can you break it down a bit more? Like, obviously there's a mint, and obviously if you want to sell for what what they raised seventeen million, or like how you know you obviously have to have some hype behind the name. It's not like just just so easy or something and then you know if they just went quiet then that's a clean rug but you you mentioned it it resembles a soft rug so you know they should have even at least typed out some vague roadmap or gave an announcement here and there like how (laughs) how exactly did it happen like it's it's weird that's a great question flower I ask myself that question quite frequently. How in the hell did this happen? And they have, they have employed um, people to sort of stave off the, the pitchforks and they just keep saying soon. I know that's a bit of a cliche in web three about how big things are coming and soon it's all said a lot, but they do this. They just say soon. Yeah. Soon. We're still waiting for news. We're still waiting for news. And it's been, I think it was March the last time the founders said anything. Now, what we've learned since is, is Dolce and Gabbana actually had minimal involvement in the project. They simply licensed their their, their likeness or their name out to the company, the Web3 company, UNXD. That makes sense. Um, like, actually, that yeah. makes a ton of sense. So, I mean, there's a real big lesson in there for Web3 companies to not do that. Do not do, do not get in, do, do it all in house because if you start outsourcing this to people and UNXD, they're the they're Web3 company get this we should have this was a red flag we should have got out on day one so instead of instead of sending the nfts out when you paid for an nft when you minted it you know the smart contract takes care of it and sends it to your wallet well unxd said to save to save on gas we're going to um we're going to deliver these manually and they sent out four and a half thousand boxes one by one by one i don't know why i didn't sell on that day i don't know why um and so, yeah, the, the, even the Web3 company didn't have a clue what they were doing. And, um, yeah, so how did this happen? I uh, don't know, really. People have just kind of got used to it. I think I think um, people in Web3 are just so used to getting rugged. Some of them have, like, a, um, a dominance fetish, maybe. I don't, I, I don't know. But I, I've been looking at this for a long time, just thinking I can't really understand what's going on here. Did it right. did it pop initially or was it like down only straight down since midday? It went up to about one point eight two ETH, and that was for about two days, and it's been down only since. I think they're about zero point zero five now. The mint price was one point two when ETH was three thousand dollars. So what you're saying? We can't get Luke Star. Oh, there you are, Luke Star. Hello there. Can we hear him? Yeah, it shows unmuted. Yeah, you're not hearing him. Okay. Well, look, that's the, that's. I mean, I could, I could, I could talk for six hours so, about this, but I won't yeah. so, put you through that. Are you saying? Are, are you saying that <laughs> but, this is um, a buying opportunity? Yeah, if you could get Luke's there up at some point, you know, we, we could do a whole thing on this. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just funny. Just, ex- just expect this to be a developing story in the next few weeks. The guy who I think the guy who wrote that is a lawyer. I read today of somebody. Um, so yeah, things things are happening with that. And you know, the Logan Paul thing kind of set a precedent where he had to, he got sued and then had to sort of go back. And he did the right thing, to be fair to him, um, even if he was forced for his crypto zoo holders. Um, so I think we're going to see a lot of that. A lot of the rugs that happened in the previous two years, um, they're all going to come to. Uh, I don't know. They're going to they're gonna bite him in the ass, probably. I don't know at some point. Well, yeah, like holders should actually take, you know, more, more aggressive approach with some of these, but it's hard to get the word out if you're not, if you don't already have a massive following, you know, uh, so far, <laughs> if CoffeeZilla covers it, you know, it, it can translate into something, you know, that's actionable. But if you're just a guy on Twitter that got rugged for, like you said, five figures and have like less than 10k followers, it's actually ha- hard to get some traction and, you know, go against these companies. 
Yeah, exactly. That's been the problem for a lot of the holders. In fact, there has been a, there, a lot of the holders have actually branched off and formed their own community. It's, it's, actually, it's actually one of the best five figures I've spent in Web3, just on that alone. It's just been so entertaining, start to finish. And so all of us have kind of splintered off and formed this sort of coalition. People who didn't even get on previously to begin with are now, have now joined forces. And it's just, you know, in just in, in the common hatred of, the, of this of this of uh, this this ruggery which has occurred. And uh, yeah, so it's it's good that it's, if it does get picked up by Coffeezilla, um, it's going to be a hell of a watch, uh, definitely. A lot of research has been done as well. Just just the last thing on this because we should move on. But yeah, a lot of research has been done, and um, yeah, it turns out that UNXD is actually in possession of the funds still. It's actually not DNG. DNG haven't even got access to the wallet from my, from what I understand. But we'll see. It's a developing story. Back to you in the studio. Damn, man. Well, you know, watch out the ruggers because we got some private investigators going full on into, you know, finding out the details of what these people are up to. Good work there, Phoenix. You know, take them to court, class action. Joe, we got one final comment and then we'll uh, we'll move on to main nets. Yeah, just to wrap it up, I, I think what I'm understanding Phoenix saying is that uh, this is a buying opportunity. We should flip our citizens and pudgy penguins and get in on this uh, this rug while we can, while it's down, right? Is that Am I understanding that correctly? I think your only shot is to get Richard Hart on it. We all know he loves that kind of nonsense. He'd probably buy up Dolce Gabbana NFTs like nobody else. <laughs> if you buy the bottom, you know, the only concern there is is no volume. Otherwise, it's all upside potential, so... <laughs> but I can think of a better ways to, to park your liquidity in the current market. Speaking of which, we, we have one of the these opportunities up on stage. Yeah, just finishing that up, man, is that Phoenix, you know, I have I have like a closet full of broken clocks over here. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to hit your clock when it's right, man. But pretty much every time I've jumped in with you, it's like, man, these clocks are doing... How's Justin Aversano doing, man? That, that one's a good one. <laughs> Shit. We should do a piece on that. I thought we were going to get him on the show sometime, man. Oh, damn. Anyways, let's uh, let's move on. Uh, main Nets. Awesome. So we just did a great feature on, on, this, uh, on the Main Nets project in our latest newsletter also you know put a tweet uh twitter thread out on that uh so definitely check that out if you're not subscribed to our newsletter i don't know what to say get on it um but we got a few speakers here uh what do you say i know this is you know we, we usually have like gaming focus guests because we're in neo tokyo this is a unique uh, project here because you guys are doing a full level one blockchain a layer yes, one sir. blockchain, I mean, and um, so what? What uh, guided you and influenced you to want to do that massive of a project? Man, it's a. How long do we have here? Um, <laughs> so it's, it's been in the works for two years. Um, our core team is the same core team from Xenu, um, and you know we were, you know, heavily focused in gaming as well. Um, we've got a pretty fun runner on the Xenu website, et cetera, et cetera. And then we've got um, a couple more games in the works. We won't get into that today, but one of the main reasons that uh, we started into this journey is because our lead dev, Dale, he's been you know, in the space you know, mining Bitcoin and Ethereum since almost inception. Um, he's a tech whiz, and uh, unfortunately, he can't be here today. He had some uh, power outage issues. At, he lives in Pennsylvania. So it's uh, cold and rainy, and he needs to make sure that his eight kids are safe, warm, and dry. So um, we will miss him today, but hopefully we'll do a good job uh, giving you guys the full vision. But yeah, that's the reason that we you know, started down this path, is he wanted to develop something that we can host our native token um, for any game that we develop. And have it, you know, be fast, cheap transactions for the end user, uh, reliable, et cetera, et cetera. I'll actually post something to the top here that'll give you kind of a, a pretty good um, idea of what we've been building. 
Um, it's actually the DEX announcement, which is coming February 16th. Um, so not that far off, a couple weeks. And right now we're, we're uh, testing at about 2,000 transactions per second, um, cheaper than BNB gas, three-second finality time, and we've got 40% of the transaction fees going back to the contract originator, aka the, de- the developers. So we're a, a <clears throat> sorry, um, we're basically a layer one that's built by developers for developers. So that's kind of the reason that we joined Neo Tokyo. Uh, as we talked about in our previous talks, um, we think it's a perfect uh, product market fit. Uh, gaming devs are always looking for, you know, fast transactions, super cheap transactions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Dale's developed, you know, probably on 200 or more projects. Um, and if he would have developed on something that would give him a uh, percentage of the gas fees, he'd probably be even more well off than he is now. Um, we, we all can't uh, mine e- Ethan Bitcoin in you know 2012 but uh he did so <laughs> it's all good um but yeah that's kind of a, a good you know intro into what we're about and by the way we're, we're mainnet z uh phonetically looks like mainnets um but we are mainnet z but no biggie yeah i think i think i had that corrected before but uh yeah so um and then what was the thought? So you, you definitely wanted to create something that would uh, be ideal for building on, ideal for devs, and you checked out all the other blockchains, I assume. Um, and do you feel like uh, Mainnet Z stands out from those in particular ways of note? Yeah, I definitely do. So, you know, the main thing is, is obviously the transaction fees um, being split up amongst the people that are, you know, building the infrastructure, which is the devs. Um, that's a, that's a big one. Um, I kind of liken it to, you know, being in early on any social media platform. Uh, the people that are in early and building on mainnet Z are going to get, you know, a lot of rewards, um, as the price, you know, continues to go up. Um, so I think that's a big thing. The other really unique thing for holders is that, um, you know, let's say that you're an Ethereum holder, you'd have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to become a, a validator. Um, so it's really kind of a whale's game, right? Well, <clears throat> on mainnet Z, you can actually stake behind any validator with any amount of net Z and you can earn passively on the transactions of the blockchain. So as we continue to onboard projects, which, you know, we've got Correct me if I'm wrong, Brian and David, um, but I think that we've got over 200 projects that are lined up already to that are you know either interested or for sure going to launch. Some of them very, very, very big IPs um, that we'll be announcing in the coming weeks, um, previous to the Dex launch. But <clears throat> yeah, that's that's kind of what we've got going on. Awesome. And, and uh, your token there, NetZ, that uh, you had the initial token launch last month. And uh, if people wanted to get a hold of that, uh, that's on some exchanges already? Yep. Yeah, we're on six exchanges um, thus far. Let me get the... Let me get something that I can yeah, put up here. Yeah, we're on uh, BitMart, on LBank, on IndoX, on MexC, on XT.com. And on uh, D- uh, Digi Phoenix are the ones that we're currently on right now. Pretty cool. And then when this uh, Dex launches, uh, what what are we expecting to be able to see to be able to play around on this uh, blockchain? Um, what kind of products are you expecting to have ready? Yeah. So the um, <clears throat> it's going to be a lot like Pancake Swap if you've ever used that. So farming, staking. Um, liquidity pools, all sorts of stuff. Um, NFT marketplace is almost uh, launch. We haven't set a date for that yet, um, but we'll have a, a native marketplace for mainnet Z. Um, and we're actually pushing anyone that holds ZMSS, which is the Zenu 
um, or the Zombie Mob Secret Society. Um, they can they can automatically a uh, time bender NFT um, to inaugurate the launch of Mainnet Z. Right on. Exciting stuff. Definitely see a lot of these um, Xenu holders in the audience, and they've been definitely mobbing our our um, Twitter account here these, since we've been uh, featuring you guys. Definitely an active community, which is cool to see. Uh, looked like we had someone with their hand up. Uh, who was that there, Joe? Yeah, I was uh, searching around the website. The, the product looks great. The speeds and everything are very impressive. Um, my question would be, obviously, going in as a layer one, you have some hefty competition. I mean, some of these companies have billions of dollars and, and a lot of attention. What would you say is your biggest strategy from a marketing standpoint to capture some of that attention and get the word out about your uh, product being, let's say it's a superior product because of speed, because of transactions, and or what niche do you see yourself going after to to lock down uh, a, a, a large user base to be able to, to grow and compete against other layer ones? Absolutely. So, you know, we've got, I mean, we could probably focus a whole show just on this. Um, but in short, I mean, basically, we've got a ton of contacts within, you know, Web3 in general. Um, we are a part of a uh, organization called NFA or non-fungible art. Um, no, not the other one, not the NFA that rugged. Um, <laughs> and they've got 200 plus product uh, project partners. Um, so we're we're also building a, a live in in person venue in Vegas, not just a pop up, an actual venue. So it's going to be a hub that's going to have a ton of stuff um, that that'll be really really great for you know visibility, et cetera, et cetera. So. <clears throat> We've got a full-time marketing um, team that's also helping us build a um, the infrastructure for a grant fund uh, that'll help people develop on chain. Um, and we're also talking to several universities to, um, you know, basically host classes so that we can build, you know, the next generation of developers. Um, that will come out and start building on mainnet Z as well. There's some interesting strategies in there. Uh, Yeti. Oh, you guys, uh, can you hear me? I'm not sure if you can, but thanks for, hello. You're good. I can hear All you. All right. Sorry about that. Yeah, listen, thanks for that answer. And I think this is probably something I, I should know, but I don't. So this 40% kickback that you have to the developers of the protocols for uh, that, that are being thrown back from the gas transaction, is that something that is quite unique? Um, I haven't heard of it, but you know, I, I'm not heavy on the dev side. So is are other projects doing this? Are other L1s doing this? As far as I know, and I've done a lot of searching, uh, we are the first ones to do it. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the EVM um, compatible L1 seems to be quite a crowded space, but this definitely seems to be something that is differentiating you a little bit. So that's certainly pretty interesting. Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so just kind of to elaborate on that, right? So really, uh, you know, so the purpose behind us being able to incentivize developers is that if you look at a lot of the current blockchains right now, you know, you'll get a developer that'll just, you know, make something and then pop smoke, you know, leave, never come again to that project. And so this way, you know, our, our strategic vision is that we provide these incentives for that way the developers to want to continue to develop for that project or to continue to develop for that chain. So that way that they can help grow. Good stuff. Did uh, Z, do you have something to add there? Hey, yeah, so I wanted to just also add on to, to that real quick. Um, so there, there's a lot of different areas of, of how we're actually going to be competitive with the other chains, too. You, know, you, you got to think about, too, uh, Ethereum coming out and all the other uh, bigger chains with the gas fees. They're going to be looking for alternatives. Um, you know, we've been through the bull market, the bear market. We've been developing and building throughout this whole time. So we kind of know the ins and outs. Amongst that, the, the further breakdown of the whole transaction scheme is 40% for developers, 45% going to stakers. 
Um, and then, yeah, and then uh, 5% going to, to validators as well. So we're kind of bridging the gap between uh, catering to developers and catering to the holders and, and to everyday traders. And we're making it a happy medium to where we are kind of like the um, all-in-one uh, incorporated blockchain that's better that's going to benefit every single person no matter what you're actually looking to to do if you want to do day trading you know that's gonna be a good choice if you want to do long-term investing that's a good choice take find a validator node and then for developers like david was saying too it's incentivizing people because there is a big issue in the space where people get bored they see volume you know it's going up and down in volume or the volume is going you know stagnant but the price is really kind of remaining the same this will also give them incentive to continue to work even though the market cap might not be rising because they'll be getting bonuses basically from the gas fees from their volume just by you know hanging around and sticking around and helping the space yeah and you guys may have answered this i see you're currently listed on uh, four uh, central exchanges you got one more coming up in february um so what point is what's the timeline on the the staking uh, options so those are actually live right now um, the chain is live. If you go to our website, mainnetz.io, uh, you can go scroll all the way down to the bottom um, <clears throat> and see the block explorer so you can see the transactions happening. And then you can also go to staking.mainnetz.io. So if you buy NetZ on, uh, let's say, LBank, you can transfer that to your MetaMask wallet. Go to staking.mainnetz.io. You'll see all of the validators there. And you can click on any validator that you see, and then you can stake behind that validator. Um, no lockup period. You can you know stake and unstake ten times a day if you want right now. Yeah, thanks. I see it all. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Flower. Right. I have I have two questions. I guess the first one is. Like one of the challenges, you know, that layer one chains face is the blockchain trilemma, right? So you said y your chain is one well, of the fastest. We don't see too many other questions post up here. Hopefully, I'm not speaking over anyone right now. The other thing I was wondering, you guys uh, recently joined Neo Tokyo, correct? Yes, we did. Um, we <laughs> um, and actually, Yeti was uh, speaking. I think that it was you, Yeti. Was it? Oh, sorry. I must not be able to hear someone. I'll just keep quiet. Oh, no, no worries. Yeah, there is sometimes an overlap, especially if you if you join back, which which yet he did. Right. Um, so going back, you know, um, I was mentioning that one of the challenges that layer one chains face is the blockchain trilemma. And you mentioned for for your specific change that it's it's fast and it's cheap. So I, I heard you mention three seconds finality time and your fees are what in, in the fraction of a cent. Like, but how do you achieve that and still keep the other parameters, I guess, balanced? You know, how, how do you keep it secure and decentralized? And then another question I had, um, I heard you say in the beginning when, when we were starting off that, um, one of your developers has eight kids or how, how do you handle that and still build a layer one chain? That's like, wow. Um, that's, that's a feature. <laughs> in itself. Yeah. So I'll, I'll actually let Brian take the, um, the I'll, t I'll let Brian take the first one, but, um, yeah, Dale is an absolute beast. Um, he's the type of individual where you're like, hey, could we do this? And it could be something super, super complicated. And he's like, oh, gosh, that would take so long, Ducky. Uh, by the way, this is Ducky speaking um, on the main Z account. Um, so he'll, he'll, you know, kind of bitch and moan about it. And then, you know, an hour later, he's like, okay, it's done. <laughs> it's like, what? You did the whole thing in that hour? Um, he, he's a beast. And, yeah, he's got eight kids. Um and yeah, family man, all he does is family and crypto. That, that's his life. He loves it. And we love that's him for a, it. Such a, such a wholesome combination, though. I love it. <laughs> oh, totally. Totally. I mean, it, it can only be like that for him. If he had, you know, if he had a, a social life and, you know, wanted to go out and, you know, do things, he, he would be, we, we wouldn't be in the spot that we're at <laughs> without him and his you know chosen lifestyle so we're very very grateful for him 
Right on. I think you said Brian was going to answer the uh, the trilemma question there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question for me? Yeah, so your chain has right um, three seconds finality time and fees that are incredibly low uh, in comparison to some others. Like, how, how do you achieve that kind of level of functionality without the other two parameters, uh, I guess, suffering too much, being the, the security and decentralization of your, of your chain? Um, so we've done a lot of testing to make sure that it, it's sustainable. We've done a lot of uh, like dust scripts to, to kind of keep things going and, and doing some stress testing on that front. Um, on, on the other aspect of things, we, um, Dale, our, our lead dev, had come up with the idea of the different um, you know finality time and um, just how quick he, he wanted things to do, which is more doable with the DPoS uh, platform instead of like proof of work and, and whatnot, where you have to actually have miners. Um, so so that kind of is an easy give right there. And again, yeah, we've just been doing a lot of stress testing. We've, um, you know, had have server upgrades. We've uh, taken the necessary precautions along with doing uh, an audit from one of the, the top auditing companies out there, Hacken. So we've been working really close with, closely with them to make sure that everything we're doing isn't uh, negatively impacting security or performance. Um, and we've been taking the necessary precautions doing it that way. Awesome. Right on. And uh, yeah, we had a little overlaps there. It happens with the with the X spaces all the time. But you did just recently join Neo Tokyo. Uh, any thoughts on, you know, your reasoning to do so and, and how the experience has been for, uh, you know, being a, a project that's that's working on this level of development and and networking and whatnot? Uh, how's this been for you jumping into Citadel so far? It's been amazing. Um, you know, when, when we joined, it, it was probably about a, a two week time where we really, you know, thoughtfully said, OK, you know, this is a major undertaking and, you know, a long journey that we're signing up for here. Which organizations are going to you know, provide us the contacts, the support, the, um, you know, kind of 360 of what we need to get to that level that we know that we want to go right and you know we, we've just seen all of the moves that neo tokyo has been making specifically in gaming and we saw it as you know an incredible opportunity not only for ourselves but also for anyone in the neo tokyo community to have um an opportunity to build on a layer one that was you know specifically for um you know it was built and designed based off of the product needs of uh, crypto gaming. So it's been amazing. We've received a super, super warm welcome. Um, and everyone has just been, you know, tremendously, tremendously helpful. So it's been one of the best decisions we've made uh, thus far. Awesome. Well, yeah, we're definitely uh, been enjoying working with you, the conversations we've had, giving you some coverage and, you know, getting to interact, like I said, with this uh, mob of your community. Uh, definitely some enthusiasm there. We'll likely want to do another space sometime next month around the time that the DEX is launching so we can get a little bit more interactive tour of what's happening and, um, you know, help people get to know what you're doing. So, um, any other announcements or any news upcoming things that we could look forward to, to see what your, what your plans are for the rest of this year? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're always in development on something. Um, you know, it's, it's a seven day a week operation over here. Um, but the DEX is the major thing coming. I know that there are a couple of, uh, exchanges that may or may not be in the works what i can't speak about right now um but all in all we're just you know pushing forward um there will be another publication coming out i can't name the um the source but you'll definitely see it on our uh twitter here in the next couple days um but it's a i think a, a very very thoughtful and really great write-up about us um from a major major source so um yeah, we're we're just super super happy to be here, um, and then I I saw that Neo Tokyo was here. Um, 
you started talking and then um, I believe that Yeti was talking. Did you have a question? Yeah, I'm not sure if that was uh, Neo Tokyo. Um, Might have been just Flower before. Oh, okay. Um, they're backing us up, you know, supporting the space as usual. Um, oh. As we are the official X space for Neo Tokyo Weekly Market Monday. One of these days, we might even get a blessing from our our you know angelic overlord, you know, because we're the official <laughs> weekly X space. You know, look out, man. Um. Anyways, yeah, you know, so you got another publication putting something out. It's definitely not going to be as amazing as what we wrote. Definitely I'm getting coverage not. from Neo Tokyo, <laughs> but you know, hey, it's always good to get second best. And um, right on. We will be staying in touch with you guys. Like we said, we'll be we'll have you back again soon to get some more updates. Um, and uh, look forward to seeing how this evolves. Anybody else on the panel got any last final questions? Looks like we are good for now. Uh, so uh, we do have this giveaway to come back to. $100 worth of nets. Now, nets went berserk. Net Z, sorry. Net Z oh, went, <laughs> went, went berserk. Uh, you guys had that initial launch, and I think it, it pumped about 1,500%. Uh, so lucky for those who jumped in on that. Uh, so it, you know, if, of course... What is it? 20 million market cap right now. If you guys are really able to fulfill all that your your goals and and get this thing really rocking, you know, this could be a nice little gift for for those who win this here. So, let's look at it. Phoenix, why don't you take it away with our winners? Phoenix down. Are you with us? I don't know, man. Maybe his, maybe his, uh, his eight kids got him. Uh, so I think I'll just read off the window. Am I not hearing him? You guys, let me know. No, no, he's muted. He's muted. Okay, okay. You never know with this freaking these spaces and all these rugs going on. So let's look at it. So we got um, AJ Looney underscore zero six. That is one winner. Kurt. Four four nine five eight seven seven Lee. What the hell's up, man? You guys need better tags here or whatever. Um, for real, for real. You know, this is you make me say all these numbers. Anyways, we got no, this one's a good one. PP six zero zero nine. Great winner. All right, you got a hundred dollars of net Z. We got two more. Texas Prime twenty twenty four. And the final winner is Heather. Two nine four five zero nine nine two. All right, so we'll be in touch, and uh, we're going to have to, you, you know, if you can contact us and uh, submit your wallet, or even put it here at the bottom of the space. That's even easier, and uh, we'll get this sent over to you. And that's about what we have for you today. Um, let's see, anybody else got any announcements or anything else that you wanted to touch on? Raise your hand quick. Otherwise. We're going to start wrapping things up. I do have, uh, like, like we said in our tweet the other day, we are enjoying the opportunity to give some attention to some other projects. You know, we've had these huge projects joining uh, Neo Tokyo lately that get a lot of attention, of course. So um, some of these under the radar ones that, that, you know, could soon grow into these larger scale projects. It's great to give them the opportunity to, to shine here like we did with Mainnet Z today. We have another one that we're working with and hoping to get some coverage to this next week. Uh, Node Runners, uh, a, a game and project from some citizens in Neo Tokyo. And they just uh, asked us to announce for them that they have opened their Discord Check them out, and they're also doing a quest uh, where they're giving away bytes and allow list for their upcoming mint. So check that out, and if we can, we'll, we'll uh, pin something for that. 
And let's see, what other announcements do we have? Um, next week, we'll be back again, same time, and we have a crew from Star Atlas. So we'll see if we can get some kind of giveaway for you guys for that. That should be exciting. They're already doing some play tests. There's been all kinds of uh, play tests going on. It seems like um, the, the, the big games are dropping their beta, and we're actually getting to see some of these long-anticipated uh, uh, big games coming through. So Star Atlas is one of those, and we're going to be talking to their team next week. You know, as I said, you never know. Angelic Overlord and all that. Um, anything else we got from Neo Tokyo that we want to drop? I think we are pretty good here. Look out for us. Uh, we'll be trying to drop some content. We got, you know, we got Shamsi, but would you? They got a lot of actionable stuff to to drop, and we don't always have time for it on these shows. So we've been uh, putting together some DGen Digest video content. Look out for that. Uh, we will likely be collabing with this team that's been focusing uh, on mental health issues and wellness, doing these weekly spaces, and we're we're wanting to collaborate with that because. As is noted, it's something that is forgotten about often. You know, it's not until the bull run is is pumping, and then all of a sudden, all these teams apparently care about uh, mental health. But we're we're sticking with that and uh, doing weekly spaces with Joe Photoshopped and Web Three MD, a few of us. So look out for that on Wednesdays. We'll probably collab with the team there, and I think that's all we got for you for this week. So I'm going to hand it over to Bud Woodja if you're available for a little send off. Oh, yeah, fam. You know, NFT Market Monday brought to you by Neo Tokyo. Always dropping the newest news. Uh, Mainnet Z, if you didn't know, now you know. Average transaction fee, 0. 0.0001. We got a 40% transaction fees going back to the developers. If you don't know about me, Ned Z, now you know. Nets Z, go check it out. We appreciate your fan for coming in tonight for NFT Market Monday. And we'll catch you next week with the hottest topics. Until then, peace out.